Hi YouTube, this is a free extract from my larger Illustrator Advanced course. You can check that out on bringyourownlaptop.com. Also, there's a link in the description for the exercise files. Those are free to download, so go and download those. All right, uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Hey there, in this video we're gonna make charts and graphs and pie charts and things. We'll even make them 3D like this guy down the bottom here. All right, let's go and do that now in Adobe Illustrator. All right, so I've just started with a blank document. Uh, next, we wanna go and find the tool you want. It is this tool here. Okay, so hover down. Yours might look slightly different depending on which one was last used. We're gonna use the column graph tool, even though I consider that a bar chart. Apparently a bar chart goes, or bar graph goes left to right. I'm gonna use this one. Now, when I create my graph, you really need to decide how big you want it surprisingly hard to resize afterwards. I'm gonna click hold and drag out a kind of rough size for my graph. You can resize it, but uh, yeah, it's easy to do it here. And what we wanna do now, what you're meant to do is you're meant to click this option, import data and or data, and from your exercise files, pick charts bar, click open, and it freaks out. Okay, so basically it, uh, it has to be such specifically um, formatted data that it's pretty much useless. So the easy way, it's not useless, but it is, yeah, it's quite specific. So open it up in something like Excel or Google Sheets or whatever you have access to. Oh, what's the default for Mac? I can't remember. Anyway, um, I'm gonna copy and paste the data I need. Now be very specific about what you copy. Um, I'm gonna copy this excluding the title because I'm gonna add that afterwards. It's not, it's not super clever like Excel is. I'm gonna copy it and I'm going to go to Illustrator and click in this first field here and paste it. I'm gonna click this tick box, that little tick kind of says go and look at it again and yeah, it's pretty good, huh? Now there's a couple of things you're gonna to wanna to do. One is, let's say I click on this and I accidentally, well not accidentally, I close that because I'm, I'm finished with that. It's called the data panel. Now I wanna go and adjust this, okay? So let's say I want to change the fonts. Okay, I can grab my, it's nice to work with the direct selection tool. Try not to ungroup it because at the moment it's a dynamic uh, chart that I can adjust afterwards. But if I ungroup it, it kind of turns into shapes and pieces. So actually I'm just gonna select uh, actually what I'll do is black arrow, select the whole thing, and you can see over here my character panel, I'm just gonna pick Musio. So this is where you add your, um, I guess your niceness. Niceness is not the word I want, but you know, um, sex it up a little bit. Another nice word, uh, word that I didn't want. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go through, and I'm using the white arrow. The direct selection tool is really handy for just going through and going, I want you, I want you. Okay, pick you. Yeah, I'm gonna color them all. Please hold. All right, let's grab this last one. Awesome. So yeah, we've customized it a little bit. Now let's say we want to change it. Okay, as in um, some of the um, maybe it's the sales report. So next month it's a little different. Now to update it, what we want to do is with it selected on the new version of Illustrator, you can just hit graph data and it pops back up. And you can go and either copy and paste it and replace it or whatever you want to do. Let's say that things change and it's no longer 150, it's 110. Things have gone bad for brewery. Click on the little tick, okay, and it's adjusted. Um, another thing you might do is you might adjust, well, that's on the new version. I'll just quickly explain for people in an older version. You go into object, graph, and data. Brings back the same thing, data. Um, let's say we wanna change the uh, chart, okay? So in that uh, option over here under properties, go to graph type. We can just go through and say, there's all these options along here. I'm gonna pick a uh, pie chart. Actually, let's look at line chart. No, pie chart, let's do that, let's click okay. Now, the weird thing about pie charts is that um, you need to have the data in the right kind of format. So I'm gonna to go to graph data, and basically what we need to do is this here, we transpose row and height. It wants to see the, uh, the information kind of going that way. Watch this. Then click tick, and life is good again, except all my colors are gone which I couldn't live with, so I've gone and colored it. And um, so there are a couple of things uh, you can also do now is um, with the white arrow, we can select on this and like what we're trying not to do is breaking that link between it being uh, like an active graph or um, so we can update it and change it easily. So I'm gonna grab my white arrow and we can do cool stuff like this where I drag it out to maybe have a like a pull out where I explain a little bit more. And the cool thing about it is if I click it on with a uh, my black arrow again, this data is still live and I can go through and say, actually, this is back to 350, I made a mistake here. Okay, and click tick. 
and everything adjusts. So you're keeping that kind of connection to the data. But there are times where you do need to kind of break that. And I'll show you a couple of reasons why. And um, I'll kind of close this down. One cheap trick, actually I'm gonna undo it so that's back in there. Um, a cheap trick is I wanna make it like a donut, like you saw at the front there or in the intro. Um, you could cut a hole in it or, actually I'm gonna start from the center here, okay. Hold down the shift and the alt, and we'll draw a circle from the center. Okay, and I should knock a hole in it and make it a compound shape or just put a white circle in it. Okay, it looks like the, the donut shape. The other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna click A and I wanna get rid of the stroke around the outside. Okay, um, I can do that easy enough. Stroke, set to, I'm guessing here, can you do that? You can, totally, awesome. That circle also needs it. Cool, now it's looking okay. So we've still retained all that, um, uh, I guess, uh, connection. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I want to actually break that connection. Um, Cause there's, we'll do some cool 3D stuff like you saw at the beginning. So I'm making a copy of my good one with all the data still connected. But there are times where you wanna say, actually, I just wanna smash this to pieces so I can do some cool things with it. And to do it, you feel like you wanna go object expand, but you can click on that for, Ever, and it doesn't work. You need to actually go ungroup in this case, which is a little strange. It says it's gonna break that link. I say yes, because I've got some stuff to do. And um, what I might do, first of all, is I might do a proper compound shape, okay, where I select all of this. Okay, uh, these are all connected, they are. So I'm gonna have to ungroup them, group them again. Now they're all bits and pieces. Everybody's still connected, stop being connected. Ungrouping lots. Now they're all separate pieces. So I'm gonna click all of these. I'm gonna grab my shape builder tool. Okay, and remember I hold down my option key on a Mac or alt key on a PC, or a little circle. And now there's a hole in the middle. How do I know there's a hole in the middle? I can use my shortcut, command shift D. Okay, to see the transparency grid. I'm gonna turn it off. If you're on a PC, it's control shift D. Why do we need an actual hole? Because we wanna make that 3D shape. So with this selected, what I might do is make another copy of this. I like to have copies everywhere. Um, let's go to effect, let's go to 3D, and extrude and bevel's gonna do the look we want. Now this, click on preview, um, it's not grouped, so that's gonna do really weird stuff, watch this. <laughs> hit cancel, so we need to group it, and also make sure there's no stroke around the outside. If you have a black stroke around the outside, it makes it look a little lame when it gets into 3D. It'll just have black edges. So back into effect, 3D, extrude, click on preview, and now I get to do some fun stuff. Well, fun, <laughs> as fun as graphs get. It's pretty cool though, huh? I like it, anyway. Uh, let's click okay. And one thing you can do is you can go to outline view. So command Y or control Y, okay, or view, it's this one here, toggle that in and out. And you can kind of look at it still in plain view. And what you might decide is grab the black arrow. It's grouped, I'm gonna double click it to go inside the group. Now I'm gonna click this one chunk. It's gonna be a little slow because it's doing 3D stuff in the background. I'm gonna click this arrow loads of times until it disappears. I'm gonna hit Command Y again to go back. And you can kind of do this like 3D pull out thing. And you feel like it needs to be rotated around. I should have done this in the 3D view because it's it's really weird if you try and rotate it, it's rotating it, but then going back to the 3D and doing some weird stuff. But anyway, we're not gonna cover line charts and scatter graphs. It's all basically the same. Dump in the data. Um, you might have to clean the data up a little bit and then it's then it's kind of making it look nice. Now I've like, these are some examples of things I've done. You know, they're not beautiful, but it's, you know, it's trying to like fancy up um, uh, yeah, graphs and data for annual reports, those types of things, yeah. Um, all right, that is gonna be it about how to do it. There's a couple of other things I wanna show you. And um, one, yeah, well actually, let's go and jump to that other stuff now. All right, where are we? We are in the middle of a sales pitch, kind of. Um, I guess I wanna show you where to take it from now. So I often get my kind of graphs to a certain level and then I wanna animate them, right? And um, Illustrator's not the tool to do it. It's it's generally After Effects. And I, I've got a course for that and I'm gonna kind of show you, not to sell the course, kind of to sell the course, but just to show you like what you can do with graphs. So it's called Data Visualization and Animated Infographics and there's lots of pictures of me. I should have had a shave, uh, but uh, it does a lot of things that we transform graphs from say Excel or Illustrator and we do, ready? Objects connecting Excel into I'm gonna mute it. 
but you can kind of see those same graphs with a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of animation just kind of brings them to life. If you're doing PowerPoint presentations and, you know, uh, things for uh, YouTube. Um, yeah, so it just covers any other nice looking things in it. No, just me. Um, so yeah, uh, check out that or you don't have to do my course, but go and check out <laughs> uh, check out yeah, After Effects for animating that sort of thing. Now, don't go yet, okay? The next one is not a sales pitch, but it is future awesomeness. Uh, let's jump to that now. All right, where have I brought you? I've brought you to watch YouTube with me. <laughs> um, it's worth watching, I promise you. I'm gonna, you can go and just put, uh, look at um, Project Lincoln, Bernard Kerr, he's a Kiwi guy. And this is uh, Adobe Max, right? They're big conference they have every year. I'm lucky enough to speak at it. If you ever get to go, this year's in LA, last year was Vegas, very exciting, right? 20,000 creatives doing course, um, doing uh, presentations and awesome things. So come check it out. Um, but they've got this thing called Adobe Sneaks and all Adobe Sneaks are is like, what Adobe are doing in the background, it's not released yet, but stuff they're trying to work on. And enough talking, I'm just gonna let this play out. This is me ending the video. You don't have to watch anymore. It's six minutes long. You can watch it, you don't have to, but man, it's cool. Uh, I hope it's gonna be out soon. Okay, let's hit uh, play. You don't mind me saying, everybody welcome. Bernard Kerr with Project Lincoln. I can't turn my microphone off, so I'll, I'll just be quiet. Hello Max, who of you out there has ever had to make a nice looking chart or data visualization? Me! Okay, I'm gonna narrate. Have you found the process painfully slow and frustrating? Yes! Would you like some superpowers to be able to do it at lightning speed? I'll be quiet, I'm sorry. All right. I gotta say, this is the first time I've heard a crowd cheer for data visualization. <laughs> All right. In the past, you've probably used one of three different approaches. You might have tried drawing something from scratch. You might have found a template that was close but not quite exactly what you wanted. Or you went off and learned how to code. Or some combination of the three. So all of these approaches start with data that sort of stuffs into a machine and spits out a visualization. But Project Lincoln flips this idea on its head and says, what if you could sketch first? and then bind your drawing to data. So that means any of the visual properties of something you've drawn could be bound to data. So that could be its position, its size, its color, even text could be bound to data. And these data-driven drawing tools live on top of the drawing tools you already know and love. So let me show you how this works by trying to build you a poster from my friend Kim Chambers. You may remember Kim, the sneak post for the last couple of years. She's not only a sneak so she's also an extraordinary swimmer and only seven, one of seven people on the planet to have swum the Ocean Seven, a set of grueling marathon swims all around the world. So I'm gonna make a poster for her. And so what I'm gonna do here in Lincoln, I'm gonna bring in a simple spreadsheet. And uh, this is for the North Channel swim. Okay, so from the spreadsheet, we're gonna grab these variable names from the top of the spreadsheet and put it into this palette. And this is what we're gonna to use to bind our drawing to data. So if I wanna make a bar chart, I just make a bar the size and shape and color that I want. And then when I hit the repeat grid, I get a bar for each of those swimmers. Now, if I wanna set the length of this bar, I can select the right-hand side and bind it to the time variable. And now all of these bar points are bound to time and I can adjust them with this axis control. If I add some text, <laughs> I, just, I just added some text here. At this point it's the same all the way down, but I combine that to the swimmer's names. I could do the same for time. And I'm gonna open up my symbol library here and I'm gonna grab a swimmer. So I've got the so swimmer sitting here repeated the same way all the way down, but I've got this new concept which I call a sticky anchor, which lets me set up a relationship between the anchor point of one object and the anchor point of another. So now they have this offset. So now I'm gonna throw in a flag. Uh, obviously not all of these swimmers are from New Zealand like me and Kim, so I'm you can find Zealand. that to the country variable. Sorry. 
Let's fill that in. I'm an island dog. All right. So here's here's Kim, and and uh, <laughs> she looks like she's wearing the wrong bathing suit. So let me bind that swimmer to the gender variable. So now we have actually three sw women swimmers who have done these crazy swims. And they, look, 17 hours in the water is a long time, right? Okay, so now that I've sort of happy with my design here, I can apply, apply all these bindings to each of the other swims. So now they automatically just get uh, regenerated based on the data. I can also throw these all on the same page at the same time. So I have small multiples and I can control the spacing between them too. So, you know, bar charts, maybe not your cup of tea. Maybe we'll try something a little more sophisticated, all right? So um, now I'm going to do a weather radial. Now, if you know what a weather radial is, it's actually a, a visualization of weather showing you the high and low temperatures for every day of the year for an entire year all in one go. So um, this would be really useful for Kim to know about uh, when she's planning these swims to know what time of the year to go for these crazy swims. So this time I'm going to bind the right-hand side of this bar to the high temperature for the day. The left-hand side is going to be bound to the low. And now when I hit the repeat grid, I have 365 of these bars in an arranged chart. And now I'm going to bind the color of this bar to the average temperature with this new color control. So these guys are running off the page, the 365, and now I'm going to throw them into a radial pattern. And then we have it. So of course we can apply these bindings to all the different cities that you would be swimming from to work out where we should go. So I don't have time to do a full poster here, but here is a sort of design that I worked on earlier. It's awesome. So I, I just built 14 data visualizations, simple and complex ones, with total creative control and freedom in less than four minutes. Wow. Cool, guys. All right, that was awesome. <laughs> all right, I'm hoping we're all going to do a class very soon on how to use Lincoln or whatever they end up calling it. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, that's the end of this one. Um, happy, <laughs> it was good fun watching YouTube with you. Uh, we should do it again. Or in the next video, we'll do something a little, little, little bit more Illustrator. Let's, let's go and do that now.